concept of monotheism, since the creation of man on earth, has been the foundation of all divine messages. There is a big difference between the ancient communities, the pagans who worshipped idols, and we who pay tribute and respect to the Prophet and Imam Ali and Imam Hussein when we call upon them as a gate to Allah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate. All our praise and appreciations and thanks is due to our Lord, the Creator, the Cherisher, the Sustainer. May His peace and blessings be upon all of His messengers his apostles that he sent to guide and light mankind be upon the seal of the messengers Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his pure and immaculate progeny and family and his righteous companions and upon you my dear brothers and sisters assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh we come to the third dimension of monotheism, Shu'ab al-Tawheed, or Furu' al-Tawheed, the branches of monotheism. We mentioned so far two of them, Tawheed of the, uh, that, the monotheism, the unity, the oneness of the essence of God, which has two branches, Wahidiyya, the uniqueness of God, being unmatched, and Ahadiyya, meaning the integrity of, of God in one. It's not divided. We don't have two gods or three gods or four or five or multiple. There is only one God. Innama huwa ilahun wahid. And then we went to the second dimension of monotheism, Tawheed al-Sifat. And we stressed that the sifa of God, his attributes, his equality, his character, is his essence, inseparable, indivisible, from his essence, attached to it, embedded in it. They are one, they are undivided. And then we come today to the third dimension of Tawheed and monotheism, and that is Tawheed al-Af'al the unity of the deeds. What does that mean? It means that every influence in this universe is attributed to God. Every action, every motion, every movement in this universe is attributed to God. God is behind it. God is the main generator of energy and power and ability and influence and movement in this universe. Al Mu'athir al Wahid fi hadha al Kawn hu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only effective entity that generates power and energy and movement in this universe is him with his permission and with his leave. Others are subsidiaries. Even an atomic reactor is a subsidiary. It does not generate energy or power without God's permission without God's ability. That is Tawheed al-Af'al. And Tawheed al-Af'al has mechanism, a mechanism. This is how it operates. And that mechanism is called 
cause and effect. Al-illatu wal-ma'lul. Al-illatu as-sababu wal-musabbab. Cause and effect. What does cause and effect mean? It means that God creates the sun. God wants to bestow light upon us, nur, light, or heat, and life. So he creates the sun. The sun is the cause. And the effect of the cause is radiance and heat, brightness and light. God creates fire. Fire is the cause. Illa. The ma'lul, the result or the effect of that fire is what? Is heat. The universe is based on this. On this mechanism. Illa and ma'lul. God creates the medicine and the result of that medicine is the cure. Shifa is healing. So we have cause and effect. God is the source of knowledge. And when you study the teacher, the book, the school is the cause. The effect is learning and knowledge and ma'rifah. This is how he created the universe. God who created the cause also bestowed on that cause the effect. Also the effect from him. He was the one who bestowed this effect on the cause. He created the sun, which is the cause. And then with that, with the sun, he bestowed upon it the light and the heat. It is from him. الذي خلق العلة أعطى الآثار لها. The one who created the cause, which is علة, he also supplied it with the effect. So the effect is also from God. Therefore, my friends, every single existence in this universe or existent in this universe does not stand by itself. It does stand by God. The only thing that stands by itself, which is self-subsisting, is God himself. God is the only independent entity in this universe. Every other thing in this universe is dependent on God. The Lord is qa'imun bidatih, self-subsisting does not need you or me, nothing else. He is in no need, he's self-sufficient. He doesn't need anything else to sustain him. God has no sustainability plan. He sustained himself by himself. That's the only entity in this universe. Other things in this universe they require sustainability. They require help. Sometimes we tend to say about ourselves, we are independent, but that's not true. How can you be independent when you need for your food, for your drink, for your shelter, for your clothing, for your health care, for your education, for your social life, for your economic life, for your existence, for your rest. You need others. You are surrounded by people. You can't make it by yourself. So you are dependent on others. And all of us are dependent on God. Ya ayyuhal nasu antumul fuqara'u ilallah. You are the one who are in needs to the Lord. Wallahu huwa al ghaniyu al hamid. While the Lord is the real self-sufficient. He doesn't need us. We need him. And therefore, <clears throat> what do we say? 
There is a common saying, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم. There is no energy, there is no power, there is no strength except by the Lord, by what the Lord bestows upon me and gifts me. Otherwise, I don't have it by myself. I cannot generate my own energy, my own power, my own guidance, my own salvation, my own movement, except from God. The supplier, the main supplier, the whole sailor is God. He supplies. كُلَّنْ نُمِدُّ هَاؤُلَاءِ وَهَاؤُلَاءِ مَنْ عَطَاءِ رَبِّكَ وَمَا كَانَ عَطَاءُ رَبِّكَ مَحْظُورًا We supply this group and that group. Now he supplies the believer, we understand. But he says, I supply the non-believers too. Even those who do not acknowledge me and those who do not believe in me, I do supply them. يَا مَنْ يُعْطِي مَنْ سَأَلَهُ يَا مَنْ يُعْطِي مَنْ لَمْ يَسْأَلْهُ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَعْرِفْ Oh, the Lord who gives those who ask Him, as well as those who do not ask Him, and they don't recognize Him. But He still pays them and supplies them. In the same manner that God has no associate or no partners in His essence and His that, he also has no partners or aides or associates or helpers in his efficacy, effectiveness. You cannot say part of this son is by itself, the other part of is by God. Or someone is helping God to create the sun, to create the moon, to create the earth, to create the universe, or someone is helping God to create this medicine, this healing. So this healing that has been done is in partnership with God. The doctor is helping God. The doctor is not helping God. The doctor is completely dependent on God. He cannot help not even 1% without God's permission without God's ability when you ask some people how did you get healed you were sick what happened he says I went to a doctor doctor surgeon Fulan and doctor Fulan and X and and they did a great job but they did not do it by themselves not even one percent of it it was God behind them and if God does not want that to happen, if you bring the best surgeon, the best doctor, the best physician, they will fail miserably. And the evidence for that is that one day the doctor who heals others, he cannot heal himself. He becomes sick. He becomes diagnosed with cancer and he dies. I, I know some cancer specialist who cured and tried to cure many people, they themselves at the end, they died with cancer. So it means it was not him who was a curing and healing. It was God. Now, if God is the only entity in this universe that bestows everything, not just healing, not just wealth, not just knowledge, not just well-being, not just peace and stability and security, everything. Why then he created the angels? If he doesn't need help, why we have angels? Why we have the angel of death? We call him Israel, the angel Malakul Maut, the angel of death. God does not need help. I'm telling you, God does not need help. Then you may ask me, then why we have angels here? Why we have two angels here? مَا يَلْفِضُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ We have Raqib and we have Atid, two angels who are documenting, scribing everything I say now. They are putting that, storing it. 
and their own computer. They're going to show that to me. الكتاب, on the day of judgment, they open the book, the book of deeds, the book of behavior. Every single thing we did, it's going to be opened. ووضع الكتاب فترى المجرمين مشفقين مما فيه ويقولون يا ويلتنا ما لهذا الكتاب لا يغادر صغيرة ولا كبيرة إلا أحصاها ووجدوا ما عملوا حاضرا ولا يظلم ربك أحدا This book is so meticulous and precise so well organized that it does not miss any single deed لا يغادر صغيرة ولا كبيرة Neither a big deed nor a small deed, but is documented in that book. This is the work of the angels. اقرأ كتابك كفى بنفسك اليوم عليك حسيبا. Read your own book, your own file, and then you decide whether you go right or left. This is the work of the angels. Angels are doing this. Then why God created angels? If he is completely independent, if he is self-sufficient, if he is omnipresent, if he is omnipotent, if he has full energy and full force and full power and full ability, then why he needs angels here? He need. He does not need angels. We cannot say God needs. Once you say God needs. You brought him down. You compromised his equality and his integrity. God did not create angels so they help him. He does not need help. God created angel to show me and you that this universe is based on cause and effect. If you need to achieve something, it's a lesson for us. Then you need to go through certain process. You need to use certain means in order for you to achieve something. You need to build a house. You can't just build it in your mind here by sitting on the chair and talking. You cannot build a house. You need to be in action. You need to go and hire an architect, an engineer. You go and get the permit from the city. You need to do the paperwork. It takes ages in certain countries. And then you have to, you know, have a contractor. And then the contractor has a subcontractor and they bring builders and they work and work and work until they can build the house. So there is a certain process. Now, those angels they are doing tadbir, management, because the Quran says about them, فَالْمُدَبِّرَاتِ amra. The angels are mudabbirat, managers. They are managers. They manage, they direct, they control. But their control and their management is not by th themselves. This is tadbirun taba'i. The management of God is tadbirun istiqlali. God is the main manager of this universe. He is the controller. He is the one who is sitting on the throne. ثم استوى على العرش. He is in charge of this universe. He sees and he hears and he supervises. But his management is istiqlali, independent from any other effect. He does not need help. He can manage his affairs. But then he bestows part of his ability and authority to the angels. بالتدبير التبعي, their tadbir and their control and their administration and their management is dependent on God, not independent from God. Please listen to this. The tadbir of the angels, the administration of the angels, 
the control of the angels, the work of the angels, the management is totally dependent on God. Taba'i, tadbirun taba'i. While God's management is istiqlali, completely independent, he does not need help. He can manage that by himself. And therefore, Absolute management of the universe pertains only to God. The angels are subcontractors. They work for God with the permission of God, with the ability of God. He bestows this power and this ability on them. At-tadbiru al-istiqlali, ay tadbiru Allah ala wajh al-istiqlal. The primary, bil asala, the primary management pertains to God. While those angels, including the angel of death, he works under God's supervision, under God's permission. It is God who dispatches him left and right, not by himself, with the permission of God. The angel of death is completely. If God does not want him to work or to function, he becomes completely incapacitated and disabled. So he is not the authority. God is the authority. However, God delegates him. God commands him, orders him to take the soul of this person and that person. One of them is in India. The other one is in North America. Few seconds, not even seconds, less than a second. He flies left and right, left and right, by the permission of God. So God made it this way, so me and you learn that this universe is based on cause and effect. So you don't sit at home and you don't work and say, God, please send me some money. Send me some food. God says, I can't send you. I would not do that because you have to work. You need money. You need to generate money. You have to work. Go and work. I will send you money. Or if someone is sick and he says, I don't want to go and see a doctor. I hate medicine. God says, I'm sorry. If you don't go and see a doctor, if you don't go to the hospital, if you don't consume medicine, I'm not going to heal you. Or someone wants to learn. I've seen many enthusiastic youth who want to learn, but they don't want to spend time at school. They, want, they don't want to spend their energy studying, yet they want to be very learned. God says, I'm sorry, that does not happen. Or someone who loves kids, and children, but he doesn't want to get married. God would not give you children out of the wall. He says there is a way for it. There is a path. Go and get married, I will give you children. Go and see a doctor, I will bestow healing on you. Go to the market, go and work, I will give you wealth. I will give you money. Go to school, work hard, I will give you knowledge. Cause and effect. This is Tawheed al-Af'al. Every single motion in this universe is with his permission. Now you may ask me, even the bad ones that happens, bad events, with his permission? Yes, it is with his permission. How does that work? God, with the permission of God, someone murders? Yes. With his permission, but not with his will, not with his, accept, his acceptance. And I'm going to elaborate on this very important point in the next session, inshallah. How come that God, he gives power, energy, ability to someone. And then if that one uses this energy to kill, God says to him, you did something wrong. It was the energy was from God. The ability was from God, but the con consent and the permission was not from God. 
I'm going to elaborate on this in the next session, inshallah ta'ala. May Allah bless you all. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mm-hmm.